uh, sort of, we've sort of uh, put it into context as to why so much buzz surrounding it and what corporate India is uh, expecting, markets are expecting, etc., etc. What about the common man? Because this is the please all budget that Sumit was talking about. It's traditionally been the please all budget. Do you think that there's a chance that this time around uh, they will, you know, sort of exceed the norm and present a rather elaborate budget? Every chance. Every chance, Krishna. I mean, I agree with, with Carter K. Um, you know, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, MP yes. was a big shock for them, right? And, and disastrous in terms of timing. I mean, politics is all about momentum, as we know. And so they'll be taking this opportunity, albeit it's an interim budget or a budget on account, you know, to try and regain the momentum. I think the, the, the challenge is, and it's all about timing, mm. they've left it too late. So whatever they put out today is, is a bit like making kind of promises mm. on, on your wedding night, <laughs> right? Perhaps too little, too late. But the common man will be watching the this very night closely. The might not be the latest in terms of uh, making, the, making promises, sir, because at the end of the day, we are three months probably at best away from an election. And every government has tried to do something that can make sure that they retain power. Not many have succeeded. No, again, I would say that, well, on t oh, there are two levels to this. Um, three, months, three months is very close to the election. On the other hand, as Carter Kay would, would I'm sure, agree with, mm. three months is an eternity in politics. <laughs> so there's a lot can happen between now and then. But they lost the momentum, and, and to a great extent, they've only got themselves to blame for losing that momentum. Mm. They're going to have a job getting that back now, whatever they hand out today. There is lots of historical context as well when it comes to this interim budget that gets presented in India just before uh, the elections. The world around will be looking at the fiscal discipline of India. And India's fiscal discipline has been consistently slipping. And it is said to most say that 3.5% uh, is the likely fiscal uh, deficit target that will be announced in this budget. And that's not good news for India. That, that will not enthuse investors or financial institutions across the world to invest in India. So he here's the thing, Krishna. Fiscal prudence is part of an overall package uh, of economic competence, right? It's one measure. To your point, um, the government couldn't say at the moment that it's delivered on, on fiscal prudence, right? And, and notwithstanding Sumit's point about having a certain amount of leeway, the piggy bank at the moment does not have much in it. So, so to Cartier's point, if it's a populist political budget, they're going to put more strain on the fiscal, uh, on the fiscal situation. The bigger picture, of course, is that on various measures of economic competence, the jury's out. So two RBI governors have right. gone on their watch. Once is careless, twice is worrying. Head of the CBI's gone. Head of the Statistical Commission's gone. You know, key right. advisors have gone. So I think if you're representing the international community, and we're international investors, you look at this with a certain amount of mounting skepticism, and I say, Fiscal prudence is one measure, but it's part of an overall package. Fair and enough. I'm not sure, like, so if you take people like Margaret Thatcher in, in the 80s in the UK, she had an iron lady reputation for strong economic management. I don't think the BJP have delivered on that. A personal question, do you invest in markets and if yes, have you made any money so far over the last year's so-called bull run for some months? Uh, I don't put money on the markets, but we plough our money into the ground in India. So we're here investing kind of on the front line of the consumer right. story. So what we can say on that front is, you know, we're in possibly the world's highest potential consumer market, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. But getting, getting off the beach and into the territory of profits is, 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 is tough yards, right? You know, Jasper, we had been discussing with our guests, you know, who had been connecting uh, with us from London, from Washington, from Jakarta, from Chennai. You know, we have been talking about expectations, India and the world. But you see, uh, you know, India and the world is one part of the relationship, but there is an India within India. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that India, I would say, uh, which drives the economy, the word which you use, Krishna, MSME, which you are also talking about, Sumit. So, Jasper, coming to you, demonetization impacted MSME sector very badly. It's the informal economy was in shambles uh, because of certain streamlining of the procedures. Now people say whether, whether effectiveness, uh, or the, the way they conceived the uh, demonetization was wrong, right? It's a matter of debate whether it got executed correctly or not, matter of debate. But do you, what sort of vision of the government you expect when it comes to MSME, the rectification part? In your opinion, if you are in that chair, what is the first thing you are going to do to solve the MSME issues. So here, again, I come back to what I said before. 
government needs to get out of the way of, of, of the SMA, 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 I'll call them SMEs, that's easier, that's easier for me. You know, I'm part of that community. What is it that holds us back? It's not capital, it's not opportunity, it's not markets. It's regulation, it's licenses, it's Babu's running the licenses, it's complex tax. I'm going to give you an example of this the other day. The government were implementing an angel, uh, 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 mm. you know, an angel investor tax scheme, but they got stuck on an abstruse peak calculation around DCFs and net present net asset value. And what it smacks of is overwork for the Babus. They need to get out of the way and the SMEs can forge ahead. Jasper, uh, you know, as we sit in and, 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 and uh, pontificate about the kind of things that could have been done, should have been done, ought to have been done uh, to fix some of the uh, problems uh, ailing India, the, the, the reality is that every budget also comes with, it, comes with many constraints attached to it. That's probably the reason why, despite the fact that there are obvious ways to fix the Indian economy, many of which has not been done. And that has become a, prob a sore point. Agriculture has been India's sore point for a very long time, but now things have gone out of control. And that is the reason why it becomes the responsibility of the government of the day to find long-term solutions for uh, the farm districts. As we were discussing, minimum support price is not the long-term solution. Even giving uh, farm loan waivers. Farm loan waivers, for example, reaches only 30% of the entire farming population of the country. 70% are not uh, covered by the farm loan waiver. <laughs> it, exactly, it reaches farmers. Telangana, for example, has the has a scheme where 90% of the land owners in Telangana are covered by transfers from the government of 4,000, <clears> 5,000 rupees. Uh, you have the Odisha government who go step further and, and, and give cash to tenant, uh, you know, landless uh, agriculturers. Uh, perhaps the central government can take a cue from Telangana and Odisha and come up with something more consolidated for the entire country? Well, I, I think, I mean, as Mr. Kasper and many people are saying, the means have always been available. The means are available. Um, you know, it becomes a question of a question of will. Um, one would hope now that um, you know the, the the problem is reaching such magnitudes that you simply cannot get away with um, fobbing off that uh, that huge element of the veggie base. I'm bound to say, however, just just to kind of recognise our limitations here. And Mr. Cutter said it that. You know, there's one too many tie wallers in this debate. The farmers know what they need. Let's have some of them here. Jasper, if I could come to you on this, the jobs question has been a big one, and the BJP government has been on the back foot, even though they've been saying that they've done so much for the youth. Do you think that these measures, or the measures that they can take in the, in the months ahead, will be able to address it? Is it because the government hasn't done enough, or is it because that's how the situation is? They're caught in a bad circumstance. So I think they, it, was, it was striking that they didn't, that Mr. Goyle didn't address it directly. I mean, you can argue in terms of um, the, the proposals that the tax cut for the salaried classes will create some momentum in the consumer economy, which itself will, will create jobs. Um, other than that, the other thing I was taken by, Palki, is there were, there were a lot of buzzwords around... Um, you know, start up India. I mean, I think uh, he, he looks like he's had a, uh, uh, been doing a, a, an MBA at night. So, you know, you've got empowering centers of excellence, changing this, digital villages, trader friendly. It, it's, all, it's all great talk. There's a lot of jargon thrown into there. But I'm involved in multiple startups in India. And I can, I can, I can tell you from where I'm sitting that, that what's needed there is cuts in regulation tax breaks, all this chit chat about centres of excellence isn't going to help. And I think actually there's another, there's another angle on here is why have we got so many startups? Yes, it's because there's entrepreneurial spirit, but because there's, there isn't jobs. That's the other side of the coin. So I think, I think the jury's out on this. And if I was in the, in the shoes of Congress, in addition to trying to get, get, get some purchase on the, agri on the agrarian issue, I, I would be looking very hard at that topic to see if I could unpick the, uh, the BJP narrative.